Is the iPhone SE 2 the perfect blend of performance and affordability? Look no further. In this video, we'll be unraveling the features, exploring the design, and sharing our first-hand experience with the iPhone SE 2 to answer the question, is it still a good phone in 2024? First, let's explore the design. The phone's outer appearance first appeared in the iPhone 8 back in 2017. It has an aluminum frame, glass back, and some chunky bezels on the front. And this phone is very comfortable to hold. I love the small form factor, but also it has a premium feel to it, weighing in at about 148 grams. It has IP67 dust and water resistance, and you'll be able to get this device in three different colors, black, red, and white. But overall, this is a phone you'll definitely be able to spot from a distance and be like, that's the phone with Touch ID. And speaking of Touch ID, Touch ID with three gigabytes of RAM and the A13 Bionic is snappy fast. But if your thumb is sweaty or wet, then nine times out of 10, it's going to fail. Since we're on the topic of three gigabytes of RAM and the A13 Bionic, let's talk about performance under the hood. And honestly, from day to day things, running the newest iOS 17, it's gonna be just fine. But since I do tend to push my phones more, I've gotten this thing to hiccup in a few spots but nothing major. You can do a bit of gaming with this, but also take into consideration this is only a 4.7 inch LCD and you're running games like Call of Duty Mobile, which it has the chip to handle it, but it's not gonna be pleasing to run on a smaller screen, but it can run it. Though for me, I tend to run slower games like Classic Temple Run. Am I the only one who still plays that? Anyway, let's talk about the screen. Like I said, a 4.7 inch LCD was 750 by 1,334 pixels and it is locked in at 60 hertz. But honestly, the 60 hertz feels fine. Yes, it is a cheaper screen, and for outdoor use, it has a max brightness of 625 nits, still usable for me in sunnier environments. Speaking of sunny environments, these are some photos I took with this phone's one 12 megapixel camera. And some of these photos look really good. It has a solid depth of field, and the lowest f-stop is 1.8. This phone definitely does its best in good lighting scenarios. In darker scenarios, since this phone does not have any night mode, it's definitely not going to be near as good as a 12 mini. And even though this phone does not have a designated ultra wide camera, it still can take some really high f-stop photos. As for the zoom on this thing, it's going to be a digital zoom, so nothing amazing. And as for the video, you can shoot up to 4K at 60 frames per second with the main camera, and that's solid. It has a 7 megapixel selfie camera, it can shoot at 1080 by 30 frames per second. And here is the built in microphone. Guys, this is the selfie camera and this is the built in microphone. Now let's talk about probably the weakest thing on this phone and that's the smaller battery. It has a 1,821 million power battery and my battery health is at 100% and I get about five hours screen on time. You can charge at 18 watts for 30 minutes and that'll get you 50%. And you do have wireless charging, but no MagSafe. So if you tend to use your phones a little more heavy, take in consideration this thing's battery life is not the best. These are the Nothing Ear Sticks. These are made by a company called Nothing. Nothing hasn't been around for that long. These were launched in 2022, and now the year is 2024, so are they still a good buy? Overall, my conclusion for the iPhone SE 2 is yes, I do still think it's a perfectly capable phone to be using in 2024. It's still gonna receive updates for another two years, and doesn't feel slow, but the home button is showing some age. Whether you're wanting to try Apple's ecosystem, this is a great starter. Or if this is your kid's first phone, or just want a cheap iPhone. The cheapest you can get this phone from back market is 120, but they usually go for 130 for the base storage option. If you want higher storage option, like 128 or 256, it's gonna cost a wee bit more. But for a capable phone with 64 gigabytes of RAM and only 130 bucks, I would definitely recommend it. If you guys found this video helpful, hit that subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next one.